the Antarctic's highly vulnerable to the projected increases in ocean temperatures and may drive ice climate feedbacks that further amplify warming. Okay, so I'll, do, I'll cover a couple things here because this is very important. So the projected contribution of the Antarctic ice sheet to 21st century global mean, mean sea level ranges from negligible to several meters. Okay, now 21st century is basically uh, 2001 um, to 2100, right? Because the first century is actually zero to to year um, year uh, uh, 91, 999, right? And then you get year 100 to to uh, or, or or zero to 100, and then 101 to um, to 200 and so on. Um, so anyway, the 21st century, 2000. Okay, so by 2100, what this saying is is by 2100, uh, we could have several meters of contribution to sea level rise from Antarctica. There'd be at least a, you know what several two to three. This is references two and three, but several meters. You know, a couple meters would be two, right? Several meters, three. You know, four meters, three anyway. Um, so if we add that and then add the rise from um, Greenland, add the rise from mountain glaciers and stuff, you know, you'd be talking about maybe, you know, uh, six, seven, seven meters. I mean, Hansen's said five meters by 2100. I said if the, you know, feedbacks continue such that the doubling period of melt of, of uh, Antarctica and Greenland stays at about seven, which has been at for the last three decades. We would have much higher sea level rise by by 2070, even as opposed to 2100. You know, those numbers in 2100 could be seen in 2070, even. I mean, we just don't know. Um, so, you know, this goes in. This says again to remind you that, you know, it's 129,000 to 116,000 years before present also called marine isotope, isotope stage 5E, you know, 129 to 116 kilo years. Okay, the polar, there were warmer polar temperatures, high, the, globe, the global mean sea level rise was six to nine meters higher, possibly up to 11 meters relative to the present day. Okay, and two meters from Greenland, ocean thermal expansion and melting one meter. So that would imply substantial Antarctica mass loss. Okay, okay, so let's look. Um, so basically, they've looked at models, you know, with ocean temperatures going up two degrees C or four degrees. And, it, you know, basically, you need under, under two degrees. I think it was about 1.6 degrees of ocean warming around Antarctica, and you're basically committing the uh, melt of West Antarctic with those massive sea level rises. So let's look at the figures because there's a lot of detail in this paper, and I, I, uh, it, it's, um, yeah, I, I just want to cover the highlights. So this is Antarctica. This is an area called Patriot Hills. This is the Weddell Sea embayment. These are where some ice cores were taken. This is the ocean, seawater ocean change, the sea surface temperature change from 1981 to 2010. And you can see these whole areas here, you know, being 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 degrees Celsius warmer in 2010 than they were in 1981. So significant warming of the oceans here. So these are the areas where the glaciers would be under, where, where the glaciers, the the ice sheets would and and ice shells would be undercut the most. Um, this is um, the particular region here um, that they looked at, Patriot Hills, and this is the mountains that you see here. The Horseshoe Valley here. The ice is flowing here from high elevations to low elevations. The grounding line to the ice sheet up here is 50 kilometers away. The prevailing winds are here, so they get up to the top, <coughs> you know, very cold and dense, and then they come down, you get catabatic winds, which scour away the snow between B prime and B, and that's where the ice samples were taken to date. So this is 
from, from uh, B to B prime. And as you go further and further from B, you know, if you're B, you've got recent, more recent ice, so scouring is less. As you go further along, there's more and more scouring, so the older ice is at the surface. So as you go from B prime, from B to, to B prime, sorry, B prime, I got that wrong. B prime scouring is less. I guess the winds have decreased in, in amplitude. As you go from, walk from B to B prime, you basically go back in time with the samples that you take on the surface. And this is a cross section of, uh, you know, this, this whole area here from A to A prime. So we've got Horseshoe Valley here, Independence Trough, and you can see, you know, basically you've got the ice um, layers through, so you can identify what type of ice layers there are um, to, to help you see what's going on. Um, and basically, um, now this goes to very complicated, um, some very, you know, uh, difficult to explain records, but basically this is global relative sea level. Um, back, uh, so back in this Eemian period, this warm period, sea levels were, you know, much, were much higher than they are at present. You know, that three to six meters or, or, um, or, or six to nine meters rather, possibly even 11 meters. Um, and you can look at uh, proxies that give you uh, temperatures being much higher. Um, and so this is some isotope work, higher temperatures here. Um, you can look at, see the global methane. So as we were in this warmer period, there was more methane. Um, some of that methane possibly released from the um, sediments underneath the uh, collapsed ice shelf. Um, and this is the AMOC, and you can see this is like a Heinrich event here. Uh, this, is, this is up in the Arctic, you know, Heinrich, Heinrich event, remember a Heinrich event um, can then lead to southern warming. So I'll go back and show you a couple more things. So here's the idea of the um, Heinrich 11, the onset of Heinrich 11. Okay, so what happens is you get very, very, a lot of warming in the Arctic, you get a lot of calving, suddenly you get, uh, it's part of these dansgaard osher oscillations where the temperature fluctuates up and down uh, fairly quickly and it generally ends in a so-called Heinrich event and this was one of the biggies, Heinrich 11. So you get these basically icebergs covering the Arctic Ocean. So they cool the water, they, they start melting and they cool the water here so it's fresh water on the surface. So you can't get, uh, you can no longer, the normal circulation, um, ocean circulation, where you get the water going north, cooling down, it's salty, then it sinks to the bottom and starts, you know, completes the, the AMOC cycle. Well, instead of, now because the water's all fresh here, it starts to sink earlier and it's weakened. So it sinks here and in the Antarctic, you get Antarctic uh, bottom water created and circling up here. So basically, you get a colder Arctic here and a warmer uh, southern hemisphere. Um, so, you know, this is the onset. And then over time, the southern hemisphere warms up um, and you get loss of sea ice in the southern hemisphere. You get methane released um, and uh, the IT intertropical convergence zone, it sort of shifts. You know, here the Arctic's colder. Uh, the, 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 uh, okay, the, the uh, Arctic's warmer, sorry, and as the Antarctic, uh, warms, the, uh, the ITCZ shifts, and this is early last interglacial, so that you normally have this situation, okay, but then it shifts, um, it shifts, Okay, so there, there, there's a, it's called the bipolar seesaw, if you like, between um, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. You know, if the northern hemisphere warms rapidly, that can, there, in, the, in some of the records, it shows southern hemisphere cooling um, and, and vice versa, a seesaw. So they're bef definitely connected, you know, key, um, importantly by, by the uh, ocean currents. Okay, this is an interesting model of Antarctic ice sheet evolution. So the idea is, so the computer models basically um, varied the atmospheric temperature, that's the DTs, so 
atmospheric temperature up four degrees. And they also varied the ocean temperature, D ocean temperature, up three degrees. And then it, you had a curve of mass loss on Antarctica over time. Now, the time scale here was, uh, you know, up to 10,000 years, but most of the melting was, you know, quick in the first 1,000 years. Now, like I said, the time frame, I'm at, like this type of scenario, the, the, the shape of these curves is probably quite accurate, but the time scale is likely to be compressed over this, in, in my opinion. So the, the blue curve here um, is there's no atmospheric temperature change in Antarctica. Um, don't think that's ac so accurate. Um, but the, there is a change of two degrees just in the ocean temperature. So we're, trying, we're taking out the effects of the atmospheric warming and we just look at ocean temperature. If ocean temperature increased two degrees, then the mass loss in terms of mean sea level ri uh, rise, mean sea level increase, this is in meters, um, okay, then uh, we'd follow this trajectory. So after a thousand years, we'd have tremendous melting here and here of the West Antarctic ice sheet. And then, uh, so that's the, this case here, and at the, at the two, so we'd have 3.8 meters of sea level rise modeled from the a loss, and this is what Antarctica would look like. Then after um, another thousand years, the melting would continue, okay, but slow down, okay, because lots of the ice that is sitting on bedrock has already left, has already gone, so the melting would slow down according to this, and we'd have 6.1 meters of sea level rise, and then after at the five kilo year, 5,000 years, we'd have 6.8 meters, so a significant slowing, and that's again for, for no temperature t change in the atmosphere and a two degree C rise in ocean temperatures. Okay, and there's th this curve can be summarized basically um, in a table and uh, you know there's some other images and things in this paper uh, but I think I'm going to stop um, there. So the key thing in this paper is well if you look here okay from over 30 years from 1981 to 2010 uh, we've, this, we've had significant warming of the water temperatures around the peninsula um, up to, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1 degree Celsius in some places already. And according to the uh, modeling, um, you're committing to the loss of the complete West Antarctic ice shelf with 1.6 degrees Celsius of warming. Of course, the, the, higher, the faster the warming, the higher the warming numbers, the faster the ice goes. So this is a very um, important study, loads of authors, um, and uh, yeah. So, so those are the key points, and I'll just remind you to have a look, uh, you know, on my Twitter, um, on, on my website. Um, on my Twitter feed, on my website, where there'll be a, a blog post on this. Um, and in my YouTube channel, um, you can actually, you know, you can do searches. So if there's any topic at all that you want to look at with uh, abrupt climate change, um, any part of climate change, then I've probably done a video at some point on it, um, or I try to fill in the gaps. And uh, so you can just go directly to my YouTube channel and, and find out this, the, the information that you're looking for. You know, I try to connect the dots on abrupt climate change. And again, please consider, uh, you know, if you like these videos, please consider donating to support my research and work on these videos. So thanks for listening. Bye for now.